Hello everybody, this is your host Hannibal the Electronic Parts Cannibal Lecter. <laughs> and I have been scavenging off electronic parts right now from my dad router, an older model by A1, an Austrian internet provider, which I managed to break. So, as a model number, it seems to be a PRGAV. 4202N and ah, yeah the one wire just broke off but I won't be needing this anyway now anytime soon anyway so here it was on this little metal part see recently I saw some guidance that routers not uncommonly actually have a serial port on them which is just not populated and indeed you can solder onto it wires which is what I did on mine after I discovered it and then you can connect such a TTL to USB adapter to it and then you can connect over the serial part, uh, port to that USB to TTL adapter and actually get in contact with your machine. I was hoping to somehow get into it, manipulate it a bit, toy with it, but in the end I just ended up breaking it. More about that in a moment. First, however, just let me briefly explain what the serial port on this stingy looks like in case anyone else would like to try it, as the router seems to have been pretty popular in Middle Europe in, in the past year, so maybe the one or the other still has one and wants to try it out. So this is the serial port, it's just right, right next to this uh, quite obvious little uh, transistor, what is this? Anyway, so these three pins are all ground, therefore I connected just to the central one of them. This central pin on the other side with the red wire is 3.3 volt. You don't necessarily need that, but I figured why not. These two are RX and TX. I forget which is which, but that doesn't matter much. If you can't connect, then just switch the pins on your USB to TTL adapter. There is no danger in that. Yeah, and I'll take that with a grain of salt from the guy who bricked his router, right? But no, nothing bad happened. So... That was definitely not too hard to accomplish. And this is how I actually established initial contact with my router over the serial port and away from the web interface. And next I shall describe you what I saw in there and how, in fact, I killed it. Prior to my router's demise, I was able to capture somewhat of a serial log or boot log from it by connecting to it at 115,200 baht at 8N1. I tried to connect also 300 baht and 9,600 baht but nothing would be happening. At 115,200 8N1 however it was spitting at me these uh, fragmental commands or texts or whatever you call this. I tried to well, interact with it. In particular, I was having hopes for the hello, but nothing was apparently working. And yeah, I gave up on that pretty quickly. I was thinking the hello might be working somehow similarly to an SMTP prompt, but it wasn't. <laughs> so I figured why not reboot it. And I did. So what you see below is the boot log basically which was pat out over the serial port most interesting of it is that it starts with the CFE that apparently stands for common firmware environment a speciality for Broadcom devices and that seems to be a sort of bootloader into which you can get if you press enter within one second of turning on the device which is what I did and on the next round I did get into CFE which in a nice way had a help command and that help command showed me other possible commands and one of them was to unlock flash which is what I did and uh, uh, that was a bad idea 
See, further below in the boot log I saw that the root partition seems to be mounted read-only and I was hoping that by unlocking Flash maybe some option will somehow change, you know, just fumbling around with it, trying to see what it will do and that I may get a more reasonable boot from the machine where maybe something can be changed or um, entered into or something like that. So I unlocked Flash, booted again, pressed a lot of Control c and apparently what I might have done according also to opinions from from my uh, support groups on the internet I may have actually just unlocked the flash to to flash new firmware but then I have supplied just trash and therefore break the device so that is the most likely cause of its downfall if we however look a little bit at the boot log in case anybody is interesting what uh, is interested in what this might be like if he or she tries it on his or her own router so this is a MIPS device apparently with some 16 megabytes of RAM right so here you have it and here you have it and other than that pretty usual a root, uh, a pretty usual boot uh, messages. You see here how it is starting in it, and then later on it is starting its various services. Here you have it. What's that actually? Okay. And then in the end it arrived at a login prompt. I tried to get in there, but neither with root nor with admin nor even with nobody or anything like that <laughs> would it let me in. But I discovered one interesting issue about it. If I would try with uh, a root admin, even nobody, it would do something like that, login incorrect or not even um, ask for a password and just tell me to press enter to activate the console. Whereas if I would try to log in with a completely nonsensical letter combination, it would ask for a password. So that was perhaps an interesting way to figure out which users even exist on that machine. Because for those which do not, a password prompt would appear. Well, I did not get further than that. As I mentioned already, I got into CFE, set the flash from read only to read write, and then bricked it. That is not the only thing I lately bricked. The other thing is my trusty Nokia 105. Here you can see it in one of its last moments. I had soldered all sorts of wires onto it with the hope of <laughs> getting somewhere with it. In the end I got nowhere. In the end just everything was staying black and yeah that was pretty much it. I must have somehow fried it. So with that said you can see that my experiments are not always entirely without victims. I wish you more success in yours and I hope to be able to present something more reasonable in, in the coming videos. And with that, I thank you very much for joining in today again. Hope to hear, see you here soon, some other time. Wish you a great day. And from me, goodbye.